when teachers engage students in a conversation about media toxicity, they actually help them develop critical thinking skills and understand the impact of media on well-being. Hello everyone, my name is Bianca Reyes and welcome to QC Teachers Tayo, para sa paghilom, pagbangon at pag-asa. lament that children consume media in various ways that can be harmful, such as excessive screen time, exposure to inappropriate content, cyberbullying through social media, or falling for fake news. When people compare themselves to unrealistic standards portrayed in the media, the risk of a mental health crisis can develop. For this reason, the Miriam College Center for Peace Education and the Dever Department of Psychology bring you this webinar entitled Navigating the G Digital Deluge, Empowering Filipino Educators to Thrive in a Media-Driven World. Allow me to introduce our speaker for today. Maria Margarita Alvina Acosta, PhD, is currently the Director for Alumni Engagement at Miriam College. Prior to being appointed Director, she was the College Dean in the Higher Education Unit in MC. She also served as the Dean of the College of Arts, Sciences, and was the Chairperson of the Department of Communication in the same institution. She is a recipient of Miriam College's President's Award for Teaching Excellence in 2008. In 2022, she was given the Amazing Alumni Teacher Award by the Marinol Miriam College Alumni Association. Her areas of specialization are Child and Family Studies, gender and communication, and communication research. As a child and family expert, Dr. Acosta has made it her advocacy to reach out to Filipino families regarding responsible parenting and building strong families through positive communication. Hi, Dr. Marge! Hello there, Bianca! How are you today? I'm very fine, thank you! So we are all yes. excited for your talk. Could you uh, let us know about your objectives? Sure. There are three objectives in today's session, and these are, number one, to equip educators and guidance counselors with practical strategies to recognize and mitigate media toxicity's impact on their mental health and well-being. Number two, to empower educators to create a positive and productive learning environment by implementing media literacy, time management, and self-care techniques. And number three, to encourage educators to pass on these skills to their students, promoting media literacy and balanced digital engagement for healthier, more harmonious family and intergenerational relationships. Thank you, Dr. Marge. What a timely topic. So we're all eyes and ears and the virtual floor is now yours. Thank you very much. Let's all enjoy. So once again, good day. Welcome to this webinar titled Navigating the Digital Deluge, Empowering Filipino Educators to Thrive in a Media-Driven World. The topic of protecting oneself from media toxicity is relevant and appropriate. It is important for educators to be aware of the impact of media on their well-being and learn strategies to manage and mitigate any negative effects. This webinar can help teachers maintain their mental and emotional health while navigating the modern media landscape and also equip them to guide their students in making informed and responsible media choices. In this digital age, educators and guidance counselors face the challenge of media toxicity, which can negatively affect their well-being and their ability to support students. Research shows the link between media toxicity and educator stress in the Philippines. This session aims to address this issue and empower educators to enhance both their personal and professional lives. Allow me to share some situationers. On digital deluge, in the context of the 2022 Philippine elections, this period could have been a digital deluge with an influx of information, opinions, and news 
circulating on various online platforms, making it challenging for individuals to sift through and discern accurate information. On media-driven world. In the current media-driven world, the digital deluge is evident through the constant stream of content consumption via online streaming platforms, social media, and news websites, shaping public opinions and trends in real time. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the media-driven world played a crucial role in disseminating information, updates, and guidelines. News articles, social media posts, and online discussions became a primary source for people to stay informed about the virus, its impact, and preventive measures, highlighting how our perception and understanding of the pandemic were heavily influenced by the continuous flow of media content. On media toxicity, this is a term that refers to the harmful effects of exposure to online content that is abusive, hateful, violent, or misleading. Media toxicity can affect the mental and physical health of individuals and groups, as well as the social and political stability of society. An example is the spread of fake news, suggesting unverified treatments of cures for the virus. Misleading information on social media platforms contributed to public confusion and potential harm as individuals sought unproven remedies based on such false claims. From the aforementioned situationers, the term navigating is relevant for educators who are overwhelmed because it implies the need for a strategic and informed approach in handling the vast amount of digital information. Educators must navigate through the sea of contents to find reliable resources, discern accurate information from misinformation, and guide their students effectively in the digital landscape, ensuring balanced and well-informed educational experience. By navigating through the vast information landscape, they can discern reliable sources, empowering both themselves and their students. This empowerment is essential for fostering an environment where students not only survive but thrive ensuring positive and enriching educational experience despite the challenges posed by the overwhelming amount of digital content. Social media news and digital content are prevalent, leading to a constant flow of information. This can be overwhelming, affecting one's overall well-being. Let us have a quick look at the Philippine media landscape, the charts, Figures and reports that you will be seeing are contents fe fe featured on datareportal.com and is the intellectual property of the company Tipos Private Limited. The Philippines is home to 116.5 million Filipinos, with 48.2% living in urban areas. The report, as of January 2023, says that a total of 168.3 million cellular mobile connections were active in the Philippines, with this figure equivalent to 144.5% of the total population. Note that many people around the world make use of more than one mobile connection. For example, they might have one connection for personal use and another one for work. So it's not unusual for mobile connection figures to significantly exceed figures for total population. There were 85.16 million internet users in the Philippines when internet penetration stood at 73.1% and that there were 84.45 million social media users in the early part of 2023, equating to 72.5% of the total population. Of the 85.16 million Filipinos aged 16 to 64 years old who have access to the internet, this slide shows the percentage of device ownership. In summary, 99.1% have mobile phones, more owning smartphones than feature phones. Laptops and tablets follow second as most owned attributing to online work and classes during the pandemic, while the decrease of which could be due to shifting back to on-site work and face-to-face -face classes. There is an increase in ownership of TV streaming 
and smart home devices, as well as gaming consoles, virtual reality devices, and smart watches. The average time spent using the internet is a little over nine hours daily. This is followed by time spent using social media, which is a little under four hours. Not far from the hours spent on social media is time watching television, whether broadcast or streaming. Other kinds of media and devices used daily are music streaming services, gaming consoles, online or printed media, radio, and podcasts. The main reasons for using the internet could be anywhere from meeting new people and making new connections to research, gaming, and listening to music. The top five views of the internet are finding information, staying in touch with friends and family, researching on how to do things, finding new ideas or inspiration, and watching videos, TV shows, or movies. Specific to social media, 72.5% of the Philippine population are users of this type of platform. Of this population, 102.4% who are 18 years old and above spend at the least three hours daily accessing social media. There are more female social media users than males. The main reasons for using social media is keeping in touch with friends and family. Other than that, people read the news, find content and inspiration for things to do and buy and see what's being talked about. As for the most used social media platforms of internet users, topping the list are, you guessed it, Facebook, FB Messenger, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. And it goes without saying that these five social media platforms are the favorites of active social media users. That slide will show you that. All right. Now, with the current media landscape in the Philippines, including the prevalence of social media and digital content, it's essential to recognize signs of media toxicity, such as sensationalism, misinformation, and negativity. By being aware, we can take steps to protect our mental health and overall well-being. Be mindful of emotional responses and thought patterns triggered by media consumption. Signs may include heightened stress, anxiety, anger, or a feeling of being overwhelmed or consistently engaged with sensationalized or misleading content without critical evaluation. When not properly used, social media can become a place of insecurity, comparison, and envy. People see curated perfectionism of influencers, which can be detrimental to the mental health of the consumer. Regular self-reflection and awareness of how media influences emotions and perspectives are crucial for recognizing and addressing any negative impact on one's mental well-being. And this is where media and information literacy, or MIL, comes in. The critical analysis of the contents from legacy media, such as TV, radio, print, and film, as well as from new media platforms, is MIL. These contents could be the news, advertising, and mass media entertainment. According to Renee Hobbs, founder of Media Education Lab and Media Literacy Advocate, people need the ability to access, analyze, and engage in critical thinking about the array of messages we receive and send in order to make informed decisions about the everyday issues we face. People need to allocate the scarce resource of human attention to quality, high-value messages that have relevance to their lives. Full participation in contemporary culture requires not just consuming messages, but also creating and sharing them. We have to make responsible choices when we access information. Analyze messages by identifying the author, the purpose and point of view, 
and evaluating the quality and credibility of the content. In social media, we have the opportunity to create content with the use of language, images, sound, and new digital tools and technology. In so doing, we have to reflect on our own conduct and communication behavior by applying social responsibility and ethical principles. If we need to take action, then we can work individually and collaboratively to share knowledge and solve problems. Let's identify strategies to maximize productivity amid the digital deluge. Time management, setting boundaries, and staying organized are crucial. By being more productive, we as teachers can deliver higher quality education. According to a study by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies in 2019, the most commonly used media platforms by public school teachers are Facebook, YouTube, and Google. The study also found that teachers use media for various purposes such as accessing educational resources, communicating with students and parents, enhancing their professional development, and expressing their opinions and advocacies. However, the study also noted some challenges and risks that teachers face in using media, such as cyberbullying, misinformation, privacy issues, and other ethical dilemmas. Here are some well-being tips to enhance productivity. Unplug to unwind. This could be a challenge for many, but it could be good to sometimes completely abstain or intentionally reduce your time using electronic devices and gadgets. The idea is to disconnect from the online world to focus more on the present moment without distractions. Remember, unplug to unwind. Next, disconnect to reconnect. The COVID-19 pandemic found many teachers learning and adjusting to a new way of teaching. Stress level was high given the concern on personal health and family situation. Whether you are teaching online or on-site, you are continually taking care of students' needs. Find some me time and enjoy what you like to do. Be mindful of how you are feeling during your daily activities and pay attention to cues that may tell you that something is not working for you. Giving in to this will later on allow you to make meaningful connections. You ask why? Because you are more likely to have a brighter smile on your face because you were kind to yourself. Next, upskill and reskill. Teaching in a media-driven world can be challenging, but also rewarding. I am sure that you've been learning new skills, such as using different online platforms, creating engaging multimedia content, and collaborating with other teachers and experts. Appreciate your skills and recognize your strength and achievements. There is no time like now to celebrate your successes. Last but not the least, nourish the mind and body. Self-care and mindfulness are essential for your mental and physical health. Self-care means taking care of your basic needs, such as eating well, sleeping enough, exercising regularly, and staying hydrated. Mindfulness means being aware of your thoughts, feelings, and sensations in the present moment without judging them. Mindfulness can help you cope with stress, anxiety, and negative emotions and improve your focus, concentration, and mood. You can practice mindfulness by doing simple activities such as breathing exercises, meditation, yoga, or journaling. Recognizing early signs and symptoms of conditions that need medical or psychological support is the first step to help you feel better. Practicing mindfulness, relaxation, and self-care reduces stress brought about by the digital deluge in a media-driven world. Mindfulness will lead to peace. This will result to enhance focus and increase productivity. And a calm and balanced teacher 
is better equipped to help students. I will end this presentation with a quote from media literacy advocate, Renee Holmes. Digital and media literacy, education offers the potential to maximize what we value most about the empowering characteristics of media and technology while minimizing its negative dimensions. Thank you for sharing this time with me. Over to you, Bianca. Thank you, Dr. Marge, for sharing with us your insights on how teachers can best take care of their well-being by developing these skills. So we just have a few questions for you and would appreciate sure. your brief answers. So first, how can we help students recognize and cope with media toxicity, given its potential impact on their mental health? All right. As mentioned, we need to teach media literacy. This is now part of the high school curriculum. Students will be able to critically evaluate information sources and discern misinformation by cross-verifying or fact-checking and understand the impact of media on mental health. Another, we could encourage critical thinking. We have to foster critical thinking skills to empower students to question and analyze media content, promoting a thoughtful approach to what they consume. Discuss the importance of choosing content that contributes positively to their well-being. Another one, promoting digital well-being. We have to discuss with our students the importance of digital well-being, emphasizing the need for balance in online and offline activities. Encourage healthy screen time habits and breaks. Of course, it goes without saying that we would encourage also open communication. Create a supportive environment where students feel comfortable discussing their experiences with media. Provide a space for open dialogue about the potential impact on mental health. Now, by integrating these strategies, educators help students navigate the digital landscape more effectively and promote their mental well-being in the face of media toxicity. Yes, thank you, Dr. Marsh. That sounds very, very practical. Um, so for our second question, in the context of media toxicity, what are some practical strategies for maintaining a healthy work-life balance, mm -hmm. especially when our professional and personal lives are heavily influenced by digital media? All right. I resonate with this question. It's as if this question is really about how I live my life in work and at home. Number one, establish clear boundaries. Define specific work hours and avoid work-related activities outside of those times. Hmm, are we guilty? Design tech-free zones. Create designated areas or times in your home where digital devices are not allowed. I guess the dining table would be the priority. Manage notifications from work. Control and minimize notifications from work-related apps during non-working hours. This reduces the temptation to constantly check digital devices and promote a more balanced lifestyle. We also have to set realistic goals. We have to allow ourselves to imagine what is really achievable work goals. Avoid overcommitting and be mindful of your capacity to prevent feeling overwhelmed by digital, def by digital demand. You know, this next, I find this helpful. You have to establish a transition ritual. You develop a ritual that signifies the transition from work to personal time. This could be as simple as turning off the computer if you're working from home, changing into your house clothes, or engaging in brief relaxation exercise. By incorporating these practical strategies, individuals can mitigate the impact of media toxicity on their work-life balance, fostering a healthier environment of digital media into their professional and personal lives. Yes. Okay. Um, that sounds very, very helpful. And hopefully everybody 
everyone here watching could uh, apply those in their day-to-day lives. I pray the same. <laughs> okay, so for our last question, are there specific red flags or warning signs of media toxicity that educators should be vigilant about when working with students? And how can we address them proactively? Okay. All right. Screen time is really excessive. I think um, work and even entertainment, anything that's uh, on demand, because we have that, that, that capacity now, no? there's really just excessive screen time. So we want to find out and we want to observe if students consistently spend excessive amounts of time on digital devices, because this will really, it's not anymore a question of whether they will be exposed to media toxo- toxicity. They are really now at this point exposed to media toxicity. So let's watch out. Let's find out. Let's talk to the parents. Let's also ask our students how many hours do they spend on digital devices. Next, we want to observe also a certain change in behavior. Sudden changes in behavior such as increased irritability, anxiety, or withdrawal could be linked to negative media experiences. Now, how, what can the teachers do? I guess really intervention, early intervention is good. We're not psychologists nor counselors, so we need to recommend the students to undergo um, such if we observe anything. We would, a red flag also would be when a student has a difficulty in focusing. A decline in students' ability to focus on tasks or assignments might be associated with distractions from toxic digital content. Is the person or is the child just playing and is the motivation to study lesser because there's more excitement in the gaming console? Think about that. Social isolation. Observe the child. Media toxicity can contribute to social withdrawal. If students exhibit signs of isolation from peers or family, it's crucial to explore potential media-related factors. Now, this one may not necessarily be easy to observe, but because, you know, we only have the classroom when we meet our students. But we could ask friends of the students and maybe feedback from family. It's called misinformation belief. If students frequently believe and share information or misinformation for that matter without critical evaluation, it is suggested that the student undergo um, media literacy skills. So focus and maybe um, give more exercises, undergo more um, sharing of the techniques on how to be critical with the media uh, contents being received and consumed. And finally, if the student has a negative self-image, media toxicity can impact self-esteem. I mentioned earlier that influencers curate their perfect lives. Um, Sometimes we envy them. Sometimes we think, why can't I be like them? So more so with students who are so impressionistic or impressionable. Watch for signs of students expressing negative self-perception influenced by online content. We, in the present, really are overwhelmed by media, gadgets, devices, but in the same token, they are able to help us. So that last um, quote that I gave, we enjoy using media because it helps us in many, many ways. There are roles such as educational roles, um, entertainment roles, informational roles, opinion creation shun and um, opinion making no, w- when we use media but we want to be more knowledgeable we want to be guided because at the end we don't want those negative dimensions in our life thank you Bianca 
Wow! Thank you once again, Dr. Marge. From your talk, many will surely be more intentional, intentional about maintaining good use of media in today's digital age. Though it may sound repetitive, we should remind ourselves and our students to limit screen time, to be mindful of content consumed, and to do their share of fact-checking before sharing information. By engaging in a healthy conversation with our students regarding what they watch and read online, we encourage critical thinking. It would be wise to encourage a healthy balance between online and offline activities. Thank you, teachers, for listening in. A self-assessment will be posted in the coming days for you to reflect on as part of your journey towards peace, positivity, and productivity. A certificate of participation will be emailed to you once we receive your self-assessment. Once again, I am Bianca Reyes from Miriam College. Miriam College commits to journey with the Quezon City LGU and QC Schools Division Office in taking care of our teachers. After all, QC teachers, tayong lahat!